What is popping YouTube? Back again with another video. Today we're doing my top 36 rankings. So if you are drafting today, you're drafting tomorrow. As I know, it's Sunday of Labor Day weekend. You can get these rankings in. Yesterday we put out my must start sits for running backs. We will be putting out my must start sits for wide receivers. So if you're tuning in for that, make sure you come back again tomorrow. But make sure you check out this video. See the adjustments that have been made from last week to this week due to injuries, due to circumstances, due to week one matchups. Let's go. moving to my early first the elite tier we still have justin jefferson jamar chase cmc this is who you're debating against in the 101 102 103 i'll be completely honest in full ppr half ppr i prefer justin jefferson jamar chase over cmc if you are someone that prefers these legendary running backs you'd like to get your running back in the early rounds because you've been doing this year after year after year getting your robust rb go ahead take cmc i'm not going to argue against you i just think the upside and that being a little bit more safe for justin jefferson jamar chase over cmc is my thought process with those two guys moving on to our mid first we have three guys we have Tyreek Hill, Bijan Robinson, and Travis Kelsey in the tier of your own. If you would have tuned in earlier last week, we had Cooper Cup in this tier, but with the Cooper Cup news, we have bumped down Cooper Cup in our rankings. That's who I would be debating with. I would, of course, be taking Tyreek Hill over Bijan Robinson. Honestly, depending between if you prefer Travis Kelsey, you prefer Bijan, it's really up to you on these tiers, but I do prefer Bijan Robinson currently still over Travis Kelsey, as crazy as that might sound. Moving on to the end first, we have Austin Eckler, Stefan Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and AJ Brown. You're going to say to me, Caleb, Cooper Cup's not even in the first round anymore? No, 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 no. Because if this is a hammy issue, we're talking Cooper Cup probably not being right for the first three to four weeks. I would much rather prefer, I hate drafting guys that are injured early on in the season. So being able to take any of these guys, I mean, Austin Eckler, you could argue the fact that our Austin Eckler should be ahead of Bijan Robinson due to the touchdown upside. I think just even hearing camp reports that Austin Eckler might not be getting the same amount of receptions when he's going to get more carries, that is not great for his overall PPR value. We like Stefan Jiggs with Josh Allen, but we didn't see that elite level upside last season. CeeDee Lamb with Dak Prescott. Will CeeDee Lamb take that next jump is the big question. I love some Garrett Wilson over Amon Ross St. Brown. I think this is where people start would start to kind of debate the rankings and say, Caleb, I prefer the volume of Amon Ross St. Brown over Garrett Wilson, but I believe Garrett Wilson is going to get the volume. If you've been on my Twitter page at all, you know that I think he has wide receiver one overall upside. And when you're taking him at the end of the first, you're hoping that he has wide receiver one overall upside. So I love me some Garrett Wilson and Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm definitely taking both those guys over AJ Brown. As amazing AJ Brown was last season, the Philadelphia Eagles system, they're just not a pass heavy, volume heavy offense on the passing attack. And so that's just what gives the advantage to Garrett Wilson and Amon Ross St. Brown. But if it's at the 112 and I end up with AJ Brown, I am not going to be upset with that at all. Moving on to our early third. We have Saquon Barkley, we have Cooper Cup, we have Devontae Adams, Tony Pollard, Nick Chubb, and Jalen Waddle all in this tier. So yes, Cooper Cup gets put here in the early second round. Now, even being put here in the early second round, there's a chance he doesn't make it because one of your league mates still takes the upside shot with Cooper Cup. But even here, I'm still a little bit nervous because we're talking like taking Cooper Cup over a guy like Devontae Adams, who's completely healthy, just going to be playing in a bad offense. That feels kind of dumb, but based on the wide receiver one overall potential that he has when he's on the field. I mean, the last two seasons, wide receiver one points per game metrics. So even if if Matthew Stafford and the Rams are tanking per se, there's there's still enough volume to go around for Cooper Cup to be super fantasy relevant. Now, I know there's rumors that he might be traded. I know they might be tanking for Caleb Williams, whatever that is. But I like Cooper Cup here still in the early second. I don't know how much Cooper Cup I'm going to be getting. But if I'm at the 203, 204, and like I said, I grab Garrett Wilson and Ormond Marcy Brown or CD Lanham, I'm able to pair that with Cooper Cup. I am going to be feeling pretty good about that. Just knowing that the first few weeks might be a little bit rough. So I got to absolutely hit on some of my later picks. After Cooper Cup, we have Devontae Adams. We talked about Devontae Adams with the Raiders, what that volume is going to be, but you can't bet against the talent because Devontae Adams has absolutely proven that he deserves the respect, even with lackluster quarterback play because he put up very solid fantasy point production with Jarrett Stidham. We then moved to Tony Pollard, who in a few videos ago, we talked about Tony Pollard had absolutely legendary upside in the second round. We do prefer Tony Pollard over Nick Chubb. While we do like the volume that Nick Chubb is going to get, we think that Tony Pollard, his touches are going to be a little bit more high leverage. We think Tony Pollard with the 12 touchdowns that Zeke scored last season, not that Tony Pollard, who had 10 last season, is all of a sudden going to get those 12 and going to score 20. But I think having that receiving work, having the upside of knowing that there is a high volume of touchdowns for these running backs makes me super excited for Tony Pollard. But then we have Nick Chubb, which we love, which we love this Browns offense revived with Deshaun Watson, who it was a down year last season. But if this year they can take that next step, we're talking about Nick Chubb in the early second might be an absolute steal because years past with running backs going off super early, he might have gone at the back end of the first. Then moving on to the middle of the second round, we then end this tier with Jalen Waddle. Waddle, Waddle. Shout out to my man, Notorious. Jalen Waddle is such a good wide receiver 
He's just overshadowed by Tyreek Hill. And with you look at the splits between him when he had Tua and when he didn't have Tua, of course, they were night and day. So just give this man projecting him a full year with Tua is enough for me to say, yep, in the middle of the second round, I think it's a tier break between him and the next wide receiver because the next wide receiver at the end of the second tier is going to be Chris Olave. My man, Chris Olave, we love, as an Ohio State Buckeye fan, we love some Chris Olave. The next guy then on my tier list is going to be Josh Jacobs. And I know what you're saying, Caleb, you got the whole contract thing situated. Why do you still have Josh Jacobs this low? I'm just not a huge believer in Josh Jacobs with this offense. I think this is more a testament to the Raiders offense that it's actually to Josh Jacobs because we've seen Josh Jacobs have very solid fantasy football production. Last year, he was the RB dead zone candidate that absolutely saved so many fantasy football teams with absolutely great production. But I just can't get behind Josh Jacobs. I really just can't this season. But if I can get him at cost like this in the middle of the second round, I'm going to feel great about it. But I'm still taking Chris Olave over Josh Jacobs. Then we move on to Mark Andrews, second tight end. A lot of people, I've been seeing Mark Andrews actually slip in a lot of drafts, but I still think the positional advantage between Mark Andrews and the next guy on my ranking is enough for me to be taking him at the end of the second. Then we have two quarterbacks. We have Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. I think they both are in a tier of their own in the quarterback landscape. And then Derrick Henry, the king, the legend. A lot of people are saying that it's time for the king to die, for another king to take over and reign. I am not one of those people. I absolutely believe in Derrick Henry this year, and I think it's a steal that you're able to get him at the back end of the second. I just can't put him any higher just due to age, due to the risks that are baked involved. But when you know that you could start with Jamar Chase, get Derrick Henry, and then get one of these guys in the early third, that is what makes me super excited about the Derrick Henry pick. Moving on to our early third tier, we have Josh Allen, Jameer Gibbs, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley, and Travis Etienne. Josh Allen honestly could be made the debate that he's put in he should be in the same tier as Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. I just prefer those two guys ever so slightly so they get the bump in the tier ranked for me. We then have Jameer Gibbs. I am a Jameer Gibbs truther. I'm a B. John Robinson truther. I must be just the R rookie RB truther here in the fantasy space. But I think the advantage that you have with Jameer Gibbs, you have the pass catching upside. When you look at this overall Detroit Lions offense, we got Jamo who's suspended for six games. We have Amon Ross St. Brown. We have a rookie tight end. We have David Montgomery in the back field, they're going to have to use Jameer Gibbs all over the field. And that has been expressed by Brian Johnson, the GM. That has been expressed by the coaching staff. So if he's able to be used more as a receiver too, I think that's going to be super exciting for the upside that Jameer Gibbs does possess in full PPR formats. So I love some Jameer Gibbs here in the early third. Then we have Devontae Smith, T. Higgins. It's just kind of your, it's kind of like pick your poison with which guy you prefer better. But you like T. Higgins with Joe Burrow in that Bengals electrifying offense. Devontae Smith, a little bit lower passing volume type offense with Jalen in the Hurts, with A.J. Brown. But we saw the traits. We saw, honestly, Devontae Smith take that step last season. So if he even takes another step this season, could we see Devontae Smith absolutely look like a steal in the third round? I don't know, but I like Devontae Smith here. It's kind of a toss-up between who I draft between T. Higgins and Devontae Smith on a day-to-day basis. Today, it's not Devontae Smith, but tomorrow might be T. Higgins, so kind of pick your poison there. Then we got Calvin Ridley. I hear what you're saying. Caleb, Calvin Ridley didn't even play last season. Why are you in on Calvin Ridley? Playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. We've seen elite level upside. We saw the top five facing points per game finish when he's with the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I know he was suspended last year. I know he didn't play, but he looks really, really good in preseason, in camp. Pair him with Trevor Lawrence, the best young quarterback that we've seen Calvin Ridley play for. Makes me excited about Calvin Ridley's total upside here. And then we move on to our final guy in the early third tier. It's going to be Travis Etienne. Now, there are some other running backs that we're going to talk about in this next part of the tier in the end of the third. The thing for me with Travis Etienne, I know he's going to be in a running back by committee with Tank Bigsby, but Travis Etienne is still the better running back. Travis Etienne is still the better running back. Say it with me. Travis Etienne is still the better running back. Travis Etienne gets drafted in the first. Tank Bigsby gets drafted in the third. As much as Tank Bigsby is going to be a value, he's going to be productive for this Jacksonville Jaguars offense. We need to stop being worried about the guy behind him. And yes, maybe he does take some of the touchdowns. How many actual bell cows are still left in the NFL? Not many. So I will take Travis Etienne in the middle of the third round. Moving on to the end of the third round, we got Keenan Allen, Brees Hall. We got Ramondre Stevenson, Aaron Jones, DK Metcalf, and TJ Hawkinson. Now I do like Keenan Allen this year with Justin Herbert, with Kellen Moore. I think he's going to be getting the targets. We've saw last season, week 11 to week 15, after he came back from injury, Keenan Allen was on an absolute top five points per game pace. And so if Keenan Allen can do that over a full season, we just haven't seen it with the hammy Issues. always seems to be nagged up but he does he does always come back and play him and mike evans as much as you say yep they deal with hammy issues or we've seen injuries happen in the past both those guys always still show up on every Sunday. And so we love that about Keenan Allen. Then we move on to Brees Hall. Brees Hall would be a lot higher if he wasn't recovering from an ACL, if they didn't just bring in Dalvin Cook. But we still have to talk about the upside that Brees Hall does possess. If Brees Hall can turn into the same running back that we saw last season in that short stint of time before his injury, we're talking about Brees Hall as an absolute steal here at the end of the third, especially if he went like wide receiver, wide receiver. Let's say somehow you got Stefan Diggs, you got Devontae 
Adams, and then you're able to get Brees Hall right here in the back end of the third. That would feel like absolute great value. Now, do I love having Brees Hall as my RB1 knowing the risks that come evolved? Yes, but the risks that come evolved are why he's in the back end of the third. It's not why he's going to be going in the first round. Then we got Ramondre Stevenson, Aaron Jones. Ramondre Stevenson, you get Zeke Elliott added into the offense. It's as much as I think Zeke is actually a lot more hurtful for Ramondre than Dalvin Cook is to Brees Hall. I think we have to understand that Ramondre Stevenson did put up very, very, very solid fantasy points per game production last season, and you're drafting him at the end of the third. So if he's your RB2, you feel okay. If he's your RB1, we're feeling a little risque. We're feeling a little risque, but Ramondre Stevenson with Bill Belichick in the Pats, I mean, who else is there on this offense? Ramondre Stevenson's going to have to get the touches for this offense to even have a chance to really put points on the board. Then we got Aaron Jones. If you're a Jordan Love truther, you're a Jordan Love hater, doesn't really matter because Aaron Jones catches balls out of the backfield and Aaron Jones has proven year after year after year that he is an RB1 in fantasy football. So Aaron Jones here at the back end of the third feels pretty great. If you honestly got a start of, let's say you got a start of Amon Ross St. Brown and Jalen Waddle, and then you got Aaron Jones to go along your RB1. Like I said, I don't I don't love any of these guys that we just talked about besides Brees as my RB1 because I don't think the upside's there to take you to that fantasy football championship land. It will get the job done and you just hopefully that you hit on another spot on your roster. We then move to our final two guys here in this top 36 tier. We got DK Metcalf and TJ Hawk. DK Metcalf gets boosted up the board because of JSN's injury. Now I know JSN, it sounds like he might have a chance to play week one, even with a club on his hand. He's going to have limited snaps. So it's still going to be the DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett showdown. DK Metcalf, can he get that touchdown upside at? That's what we've been looking for and searching for the last two seasons when he had that just amazing, crazy year with Russ Wilson. DK Metcalf still, 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 still. Maybe if you're talking about this tier or even the tier above this, DK Metcalf might be the most physically dominant wide receiver in this third round tier. We just need to see all of those physical traits. We need to see the targets. We need to see the receptions and we need to see the touchdowns all of a sudden blend in all in the season for DK Metcalf to finally shine because a lot of people are just off DK Metcalf, but I like him at the back end of the third. And my final guy at the end of the third is TJ Hawkinson. I know a lot of people believe that TJ Hawkinson is the Houdini of the third round. A lot of people think TJ Hawkinson is not the guy that you need to be targeting in your fantasy football draft trying to get on your team because he's not actually a positional advantage at the tight end spot. They say, wait for Darren Waller, wait for Kyle Pitts. My thing with TJ Hawkinson, we saw the points per game difference when he jumped from the Lions to the Vikings. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, that's because he got a, got a volume spike of targets. And who else was there in the offense? It was really just Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, and my man TJ Hawkinson. And while I hear that argument and they add in Jordan Addison, like we need to still realize that TJ Hawkinson is still going to be number two on this receiving pecking order. And when you have Justin Jefferson and Jim Jordan Addison, the whole wide open middle, he's going to be at TJ Hawkinson since disposal. And that's enough for me to be taking TJ Hawkinson, knowing that I'm getting positional advantage at tight end. Maybe I missed out on Travis Kelsey. Maybe I missed out on Mark Andrews, but really as much as I think there's a pretty big difference between Mark Andrews and TJ Hawkinson, I think there's a very big difference between TJ Hawkinson and Darren Waller and Kyle Pitts. So I like grabbing TJ Hawkinson at the back end of the third, especially if you want wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end. And then maybe pick up a running back in the fifth round. That's something that I do like to think about with TJ Hawkson here in the back end of my third. So if this is your first time on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Hope this helps you on your drafts either tonight, tomorrow, maybe even the next day. Tomorrow we will be putting out my must start wide receivers this week and my tier list. So make sure you tune into that. Appreciate you guys for tuning in here today. We're going to help you win some fantasy football championships this year and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.